So in this video, we're going to look at finding determinants of triangular matrices. And finding determinants is very important. Determinants crop up over and over again, and techniques to, to find them are going to be very useful. So the idea is, and let's look at our little example here. If we look at our matrix A, notice if you look at the main diagonal, we've got some values along that main diagonal. The important thing to notice is, if you look below that diagonal, if you look at all of the values below that diagonal, notice that those are all zeros, and that's going to be an important feature. If you have a matrix that satisfies that condition, we'll say it's triangular. In fact, we'll call it upper triangular. And when that happens, we can simply multiply the elements along the diagonal to find the determinant. That's the magic. So again, let's look at this a little more in depth. Okay, so the idea again, so if a matrix is in what's known as either upper triangular form or lower triangular form, again, we can simply find the determinant by multiplying the elements along the main diagonal. So what do we mean again by upper triangular or lower triangular? Well, we just looked at an example of upper triangular, so let's look at that one first. So we, we look along the main diagonal. Again, the idea is whatever's below that, we want that to be all zeros. So that's what we had. We had our main diagonal. Below that, we had nothing but zeros. And this is and then if we look in the what's above the main diagonal, we really don't care. It can we can have some zeros, they can be non-zero, they can be any old numbers that they want. And that would be considered upper triangular. Now, you may probably guess what lower triangular is. Again, we look at that main diagonal. So here I have an example. We look at that main diagonal. Now, if it's lower triangular, it says the stuff above that main diagonal is going to be all zeros. And again, we don't care what's below it. <clears throat> so the way I think about it, for example, lower triangular means all of the good stuff, all of the action is happening in the lower half. And if it's upper triangular, sort of all of the action is happening in that upper section. That's how I remember it. You uh, obviously remember it however you want to. The key point is, though, whether it is upper triangular or whether it is lower triangular, again, to compute the determinant, we just simply multiply along the diagonal. We multiply along the diagonal. And that's what I've done here. And notice that both of these matrices would have the same determinant because they have the same elements along that main diagonal once we recognize that they're in some sort of either up, some sort of triangular form, either upper or lower. Easy peasy. So let's find the determinant of this matrix. And maybe I'll give this matrix a name. Let's call it matrix. How about matrix P for Patrick? Why not? So we want to find that determinant of that matrix. And again, that notation we can use, it looks like absolute value. That stands for the determinant. Well, this one again is quite easy because I notice, I notice that it's an upper triangular form. So I look at that main diagonal, so there's those elements. And it's going to turn out, in my examples, all of these are upper triangular. Um, that's just what I happen to do. But I notice if I look at the elements below, right, if I look at the elements below that main diagonal, every single one of those elements is equal to zero. So I'm in business. So all I have to do to compute the, the determinant is just multiply the elements along the diagonal. That's all I have to do here. So it says that the determinant is going to be equal to 1 multiplied by 5 multiplied by negative 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 6. So 1 times 5 times negative 4 times 2 times 6. Again, this only works because it's triangular. Let's see. So what are we going to get? So 5 times negative 4, that's negative 20. And then 2 times 6, that's 12. This to me looks like negative 240 if I've done my arithmetic correct. And that's the determinant. That's all there is to it. So you may be thinking, well, what if our matrix is not triangular, right? What if it's not in this nice form? 
Well, in that case, we can simply use row operations to put it into a better form. And to remind you about row operations, so row operations, we can switch two rows, we can interchange two rows, that won't change the determinant. We can take any row and multiply it by a non-zero constant, that won't change the determinant. And we can also add a multiple of a row to a new row, uh, changing that new row. So let's find the determinant of this matrix A. Now again, I'm sure you've seen lots of different ways to compute the determinant, and that is a good thing. In our example, we're going to put it into triangular form. And in particular, I'm going to put it into upper triangular form. And again, you could do it. You could put it in lower triangular form if you want. Um, and this is kind of a judgment call if you do have one of these exam examples. Think, which, what, you know, what is going to be easier? Well, again, my goal is to make all of these values below the main diagonal. So there's my main diagonal. I'm going to make the values below that main diagonal. I want to make all of those values equal to 0. That's my goal. So I'm thinking, how on earth do I do that? Well, typically, um, I'm just going to use the step 3 a lot is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to assume you're somewhat familiar with uh, row operations. And if not, I do have some videos on those as well. So let me clean this up a little bit. And I'll write the steps down, and I'll talk through them as we, as we go. So, okay, my goal is I want to turn this negative 4 into a 0. How could I do that? Well, I could take 4 times the first row, and then if I add that to the second row, and I use that to replace the second row, I think that would work. So let me see here. I'm going to stop color coding everything um, exactly. So, okay, so I've left the first row alone. Notice I didn't do anything. That's fine. Now I'm going to change the second row using this row operation. So if I take 4 times 1, that's positive 4, and then I add that to negative 4, that's going to give me a 0. That's what we wanted. Now if I take 4 times 2, that's going to be 8. 8 plus negative 6, 8 plus negative 6, that's still going to leave me with a 2. And then 4 times 3, that's going to be 12. 12 plus 1, it looks like I'm going to get 13. So that's going to be my new second row. And let's go ahead and do two, two things at once. So I've now, I've got this element uh, to be a 0. That's good. Now I need to do the same thing with the... That, ele that, that positive 4 that's in the lower left corner. So to do that, I'm going to take negative 4 times the first row, and I'm going to add that to the second, excuse me, to the third row, and that's going to give me my new, my new third row. Okay, so let's see if we can't do this. So 4 times 1 is, excuse me, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is going to leave me with 0. That's what we want. I'm going to take negative 4 times 2. That's going to be negative 8. Negative 8 plus negative 10 is going to be negative 18. And then lastly, I'm going to take negative 4 times 3. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 6 is still going to be negative 6. All right, so it looks like we're getting closer. Now, the only thing that's, that I need is I need to make this negative 18 into a 0. That would be my next goal. And I think um, the way I can do that, so I'm looking at the element along the main diagonal, it looks like if I take, what could I take? I think if I take 9 times the second row and I add that to the third row, I think that's going to give me a 0 like it like I desire. And this again is where you have to be comfortable with row operations, obviously, so um, there is a lot of arithmetic going on here. So the first row I leave alone, so I've just written it, 1, 2, 3. The second row I'm leaving alone, so 0, 2, 13. And now I'm going to perform this row operation. So 9 times 0 plus 0, that's still going to leave me with a 0, so okay, that part's easy. And now let's go to the, the 
um, that second column. So let me clean this up here for a second. So I'm going to take 9 times 2, which is going to be 18. 18 plus negative 18, that's going to give me 0, just like I wanted. So that's the magic. Well, we still have to do this last part. So 9 times 13, what is 9 times 13? Well, let's see, that's 7, 2, it looks like 117. So 9 times 13 is going to be 117, and I have to add to that negative 6. 117 plus negative 6, that's going to be 111, I believe, if my arithmetic is correct. And hey, I think we're good to go now. So let me copy this one. Copy, and we'll put that one right down here. Notice I now have that in my good form because I've got zeros below that main diagonal. So it's finally in this. We've now put this one in our upper, whoops. We've now put this in our upper triangular form. Upper triangular form. So it says we can simply multiply the elements along the diagonal. So again, I think we call this matrix P. So it says the determinant, I'll simply take 1 times 2 times 111, and we'll get 222 as our determinant. Okay, and that's all there is to it. And I say that's all there is, right? There's quite a bit of arithmetic going on here. So I'm going to stop that video or stop the video here. I will do one more example and we'll do one more example where we have a four by four matrix. Again, we want to find the determinant and I will do the same procedure. I'm going to um, look at the elements along the, the main diagonal and I'm going to make the elements beneath that main diagonal. I'm going to make all of those into zeros. So stay tuned for that example. It's going to be um, similar to this last one, we'll just use a lot of row operations in order to do that.